Hey YouTube, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the thumbs up and all the comments last week. Remember, you can keep doing that for your feedback. Exclusive content here on YouTube, such as the intro of the show like this. But you also can sub 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 la la la. you can also subscribe on your favorite podcast catcher. Uh, you know, Spotify, Apple, all of those things. It's episode two. Today we're talking about all the things that you need to do right before you're about to get on your way to Guatemala. It's going to be real cool. Remember, you can find us Guate underscore guide, Twitter, Instagram, all of those places. Here comes the post. All right. It is the Guatemala Guide. I am your host, Aaron. Excited that you're here. Second week in a row, hit the post. Only the people on YouTube would know. Wait, no, I've already edited it out. That was the second take, but for all you know, that was on the first take. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Like I said, find us on Twitter, on Instagram, guate underscore guide. And if you're on YouTube, you can find us on your favorite podcast catcher. And if you're on one of those catchers, you can find us at YouTube. Links for all of that are in the description. Excited to be with you here today talking about the things that you need to get in your possession or get together uh, for when you're ready to make the journey down to merry old Guatemala. But as we start every show, I forgot to say that this is a program for those of you who are planning on moving to Guatemala or maybe going on an extended trip for more than just a week or two, and some of the things that you need to know. Before we get to that, it is time for this week's story time, and I actually do have a story that I need to tell you this week. One, I wish there a story just happened to us that I'm not going to talk about on this episode because I want to save it for the automobile episode uh, later on in this season of the podcast. So we'll save that one for later, but uh, just as a little preview, just want to tell you, there was a lot of smoke. But for this week's story, I want to talk to you about the adventure that it was to get our two cats to Guatemala. So kind of a little bit about our story. When we first came down, we came down in a the month of September we were here for a few months in language school. We didn't realize that we were going to be in Guatemala actually so soon. And it kind of was sprung upon us. And we had about two weeks to get here to get started in the language school and to go from there. And so we didn't have time to get a lot of the stuff in order. So a lot of the advice and the tips that I have for you are, are tips that I wish that I had known myself and probably would have done more of if we had had the time. But that being said, we were here in September, here for a couple months. Then we went home for Christmas time to get some of our other stuff in order that we needed to do before we came here for good. And one of those things was getting our two uh, cats who were about two years old into the country. So what is it? So what does it take to get your animals into Guatemala, what you need to do is if it now we're talking like dogs and cats, more specifically cats, because I that's where I have the experience. But generally speaking, what you've got to do is make sure your cats or your animals are current on their vaccines, and I'm talking mainly rabies, and then make sure you have your rabies uh, vaccines done 30 days before your flight. Or more. And this is where it gets confusing because the rabies, the vaccines need to be done at least 30 days before your flight. And then what's next, which is a um, inspection or a, a an exam by your local vet needs to be done within 30 days of your flight. So you've got like a, a, a marker there and you need to have your rabies done before that and you need to have your uh, your inspection isn't their exam after that. So we, we get the cats 
ready to go. We get their shots, do the exam. Everything's looking good. It cost us, I want to say about $200 for the both cats to be able to do that. Prices may vary depending on your vet, but you need to make sure that it's a USDA uh, certified veterinarian in order to get the paperwork done that you need to get from the USDA. More about that later on, but that's, that's, that's enough for now. So we go, we do that, get their vaccines, getting ready to go. Well, guess what? One of the shots in one of the cats, Marty, the boy, that we have a brother and sister cats, he develops a tumor. Apparently, I don't know if they just decided it was non-cancerous or whatever, but develops a, a, a tumor from the vaccine. Now, we had the best of luck because we found out that with this particular vaccine, only one in every 10,000 cats develops tumors from it. And so we were one of the 10,000. So he's got this, this tumor going and we discover the tumor from where the injection site was. We discovered the tumor about 10 days before we need to leave for Guatemala. We take him to the vet, find out that it needs to get removed. And the vet says to us, well, guess what? Uh, just bring him back in about two weeks and everything will be fine. Don't, don't touch the wound. We'll, we'll cut him open and, uh, we'll, we'll get him back to you. And we said, wow, that's great. Except for we're leaving for Guatemala in 10 days. And he says, well, no problem. You can take the stitches out yourself. Okay. Well, let's pause there for a second and talk about something cool that did happen in all this is that the, the doctor himself and, uh, his partner, or I don't know exactly what this woman's position was, if she was, um, another vet or whatever, but they both ended up being Christians. And the woman who ended up doing the surgery decided that she was going to um, basically cover the cost of the labor. We would still have to pay for the the medicine, like the anesthesia and that stuff that was going down with the cat. But she covered the labor portion of it herself. And not only that, she reached out to the vaccine company to see if they would reimburse us because she said that she's always wanted to do mission work and just was never able to because of her her job and everything. So that was that was a really cool thing. By the way, about a month ago, we had friends who came down and visited us from the States and they brought our mail. And in the mail that they brought us was a check for like $350 from the vaccine company who who covered it, co you know, got our backs for that whole situation. Anyway, back to what's happening in the story currently in this moment. So we get the cat surgery. We get him back on Christmas Eve and then we, which I didn't know by the way, except for I saw like a Facebook memory type thing that came up talking about that today, but it was on Christmas Eve. We got him back and we left for Guatemala like 10 days after that. And recall, because I mentioned this on purpose, the doctor said, don't touch the wound. I've never had stitches. My wife's never had stitches. We didn't know anything about the the care of stitches and so we did as the doctor said we didn't touch it and we put the cats into carriers which by the way need to be soft carriers that fit under the seat and then you're going to charge you about 125 dollars per cat and that counts as your carry-on yes you can still have a personal item but that's how that works in a very small thing if you want to talk more about animals please 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 send me an email or comment in on YouTube or something. Uh, it's guateguide at protonmail.com for the email. If you have more questions, I will address it on a further episode in the feedback section about getting your animals here and uh, more specific. But we get here. We made it. As crazy as it was, we got to Guatemala with our cats. And the doctor said in 14 days, take out the stitches. We arrived to Guatemala 10 days after that. So four days after we had arrived... We said, okay, it's time to take the stitches out. Again, we know nothing about stitches. And so we start to take the stitches out and it's going great. I mean, the first two, or, there's like 15 stitches, something, something along there. The first three or four is going good. The fifth one that starts to be a little strange looking, there's a little fluid action happening. Then we take out about three or four more and the entire wound, all six inches of it rips open. And I'm looking at the inside of this cat now. 
And keep in mind, yes, we had arrived in Guatemala in September and spent time here, but we really hadn't been, you know, really living here in a sense of like, we know where a doctor is necessarily or a vet or are there even 24 hour vets in Guatemala? Are there emergency vets in Guatemala? We don't know. We got a hold of our of our boss actually, and got a hold of some of our friends, and we wrap Marty in a towel to hold him together because the wound is on the top of his back, and of course when it rips open, you're just looking down into the cat. You you see the inside of the cat, and there just so happened to be a vet who was performing a surgery on a dog, and he happened to be there. This was like eight. 8 30 9 o'clock at night happened to still be there operating on the dog and he said you can bring the cat in ended up being a great experience with this vet the vet is located in antigua i'm not getting paid for this but it's called vet pro look it up if you find yourself in the antigua area and you need a vet and uh ends up stitching him back up difference here in guatemala though the vet here kept marty for uh three days after the surgery Sent me before and after pictures on WhatsApp. So that was cool if you're into that sort of thing. And they kept him for those three days to make sure that he was healing right. And he told us, hey, make sure that you are cleaning this wound two times a day uh, for the next two weeks or one week, 10 days, two weeks, something like that. We So we did follow the doctor's orders and it healed up and was... It looked amazing by that point. So that is the story of the week. If you're thinking of bringing your animals down here, by all means, do it. It is possible. It, I will say it is a little bit harder if you're if you're transporting larger dogs that uh, don't fit underneath the seat. Um, from the looks of it, that that's going to probably cost you about 1500 bucks. But with cats, small dogs, a little bit easier. You can do it. Just beware. Something like that might happen to you. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of horror stories out there and just stories that are like, oh man, we're such a headache in the time, but it's a good thing that to be able to look back on it and be able to help you, uh, because you may be out there thinking, Hey, I don't want to leave my cat behind or something like that. And let me tell you, it's possible to bring your cat possible to bring your dog. Uh, just know that as with anything, uh, it's going to come maybe with a little bit of difficulty, but Hey, we made it. So on the last episode, we talked about things that you needed to get in order before you ever got your plane tickets or anything like that. This week, we're talking about more tangible things that you do need to get into order or into your possession or get ready, things you need to buy, things that you're going to bring on the plane with you. And things that are going to help you be a little bit more comfortable in your first couple weeks or a couple months in Guatemala. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. And, you know, there's obviously a million more things that I could probably mention in this other than the list that I have in front of me. But these are the things that my wife and I have talked about and and learned on our own uh, to to be able to tell you, uh, look out for these things. And I'm sure another episode down the line, obviously you can send feedback. We can talk about whatever kind of thing, but these, these are the things that we have identified as being pretty important things you need to look out for. The order of these things I will say right off the bat is not, uh, in any importance. It's just the order of, of how I thought of them. And the first one being, vaccines. And no, not talking about the COVID vaccine, although I will mention just here in this part as of recording right now, Sunday, May 30th, that to get into Guatemala, you need to either have a proof of your COVID vaccine that you finished it. So if you're doing the one with the one shot, you need to have gotten that one shot, have your card for that. Or if you're doing one of the ones that has two shots, you need to have finished your second shot. Or if you got the one that's just the one shot, 
need to be completed at least two weeks before you fly. And if you don't have the vaccine, all you need to do is get a, uh, I don't think they're requiring PCR test anymore. I think it's just, uh, just, a uh, antigen or PCR that needs to be done 72 hours before your flight. So those are fine. Um, I can, if you'd like info on where to find COVID tests, uh, I do recommend COVID consultants. You can uh, just Google search COVID consultants. It is pricey, I will say, but it is very easy. A kit that you can do at home. Sounds like that there's a lot more available uh, as far as uh, free tests in the States now. Um, but anyway, that's that's enough for the, the COVID thing. That, that situation is always changing, so I don't want to get stuck in uh, with that <laughs> in a podcast kind of format. So talking about vaccines, um, this is straight off the CDC website. They they have about mm, five, six different things that they recommend, but not for everybody. And about three or four of them can be boiled down into you should be current on the shots that you normally need if you've gone through like the public school system. So chicken pox, uh, measles, all of those ones, they say that you should be current on those. Chicken pox is a thing in Guatemala too as well as all those other things. But if you've been vaccinated like the normal vaccines for for the school system, then you're good on that. But the ones that they do recommend that, that aren't uh, generally done in the States is hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and typhoid. And depending on where you are, it can be a little difficult to find these. And depending on your insurance situation and just uh, your doctor overall, some of the things that um, I've experienced or friends have experienced is kind of one of one or two or three things. Uh, for me, I found it very hard to find these uh, vaccinations at, with my doctor. I, uh, myself and some friends I know, it was very hard to find the vaccines with your normal doctor um, because a lot of times, because it's not something that's uh, normally done you know, every day in the States, they don't keep supplies of it. So the Hep A, Hep B, one of those was hard to find in the doctor, and then the typhoid. Uh, so the the thing you can do is look up your public health office. Sometimes, uh, like your county health organization, will have a travel vaccine uh, either clinic or in the regular old vaccination clinic, they will offer travel vaccines, not just for Guatemala, but for the whole world. And so you can set up an appointment get in there. Don't know how it is with, with COVID, but that was, that was my experience going and doing that. So I did that about four or five years ago. And these are ones that some of them you need to update every couple of years. I think the typhoid, hep A, hep B, those ones last for quite a while. The typhoid one, I think is every, is, is, uh, uh it expires quicker than that. And the other thing you can do is in your local grocery store or pharmacy, uh, or, you know, I'm saying grocery store because of a pharmacy in the grocery store where they also have a clinic or at least do flu shots, something like that. A lot of times they will have travel vaccinations as well. And if they don't have it, uh, in stock, you can set up an appointment and order it and you'll be able to, uh, get your vaccines that way. So that's like, your local grocery store that has a a pharmacy in it or CVS, Walgreens. If you're in the South or something, I'm sure Kroger's, I I don't, I may be sounding really ignorant on that because we're not from somewhere that has Kroger's, but I'm imagining, you know, somewhere like that, Piggly Wiggly, uh, what's that other Publix, uh, those, those places, they, you might be able to get your, get your, uh, your travel vaccinations through those, places as well. I mean, places that now are doing the COVID vaccine, those are the kind of places that I would look and call or look on their website uh, to figure out if they do travel vaccines. Now, I will say these are often not covered by your insurance depending on the timing. So if it's um, typhoid, that one usually from what I've seen is not covered by insurance. And that's going to run you, if I remember right, about $100, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. And then the Hep A, Hep B, that's going to depend. Uh, It's going to depend on your insurance, on your doctor, and the area that you're in. 
but just know that you could be looking at about $200 to get all three of these, maybe a little bit more. The other thing is with the typhoid, they have a shot and then they also have uh, pills. And the pills, if you end up going the route of the pills, unless something has changed since last year, they're, they're a set of, I think, three or four pills that you take every other day and they have to be refrigerated. And I don't know why I'm telling you that. You probably don't. That's probably too much information for you, but <laughs> that's just how it is. And I remember uh, with us, that was uh, getting the pills into the refrigerator and, and making sure to do that at the right time. And it, it, it's a time specific thing. And uh, so, yeah, that that's, that's uh, the vaccination front. And do I recommend those vaccines? I do. And there's other ones. Um, they like, if you look on the CDC website, they'll say malaria and, and stuff like that. Mosquitoes are a deal in Guatemala, but it depends on where you're going to be at. So figure out where you're going to go. If, uh, if, uh, mosquitoes are a problem there, then you're going to want to do the malaria thing too. But just know that that stuff is available in Guatemala as well. But if you want peace of mind, you might do the malaria uh, vaccine in the States, and that might help you there. All right, second thing on the list, and this is, it, it may seem like it's backwards or something, or it just doesn't make sense, but electronic devices are not cheaper in Guatemala than they are in the States. So if you are thinking about, hey, in the next couple months, I'm going to need a new computer or a new cell phone. You really should buy that in, this, in the States. You're going to end up saving money on it. And if you need accessories and stuff, you know, you need a new power cord or something like that, you'll probably be able to find it here but it'll uh, in Guatemala, but it'll be a little bit more expensive. But you definitely, definitely want to buy your, your bigger electronic items uh, things that are expensive in the States are going to be more expensive in Guatemala. So make sure that you, you buy those kind of things in the U S and the other thing regarding electronic devices, you're going to need surge protectors depending on where, like where we come from in the U S we came from California surge protectors. Real, like we never needed that. It was, I mean, I'm sure somebody out there say, well, you should always use surge protectors. Okay. I, I, I get it. But we never need. We never had power surges. It was never something that like, it happened one day. We're like, oh no! I wish we would have had a power uh, surge protector. Never happened. But here, it's almost a daily occurrence, and you will save yourself a lot of money and a lot of hassle if you have surge protectors. And you'll save money on the surge protectors if you buy them in the states because in the states they are super cheap. But make sure that you're getting one that actually says surge protector and not just a power strip. A power strip. And a surge protector, a lot of times look, ooh, a lot of times look exactly the same, but one protects from power surges and one doesn't whatsoever. So make sure that you're looking at uh, surge protectors. And uh, if you don't know anything about them, just go to your local hardware store or, you know, a Best Buy, something like that. Ask them where the surge protectors are. Go from there. Make sure the, the box says surge protector. Third thing on the list. And we're going to do a whole episode on cars. Oh, man, cars are such a thing here. But this is about your, your car in the States. Uh, I see on Facebook a lot of times people talking about bringing their car from the States to Guatemala. And actually, we're in a situation right now where I want to bring a car from, from the States to Guatemala. But don't think that's going to end up happening. My advice to you, if you've got the car paid off, sell it. Or if you're not going to get a lot of resale value on it, if you're able to store it at a family member's house or something like that, store it. And if you're not planning on living on Guatemala forever, if you're going to you know, be here for a couple of years and go back, store the car if you can't sell it or if you don't want to sell it. Then when you get back, you'll have something to, something to drive. Or if you're going to sell it, then you can buy something here. There are plenty of cars here. The one thing I will say about the cars here in Guatemala is that used cars uh, hold their value so much more than used cars in the States. I don't get it. I don't understand it other than everything is imported. So that must be it. But uh, that's the deal. Sell your car or store it 
in the States. You don't want to be dealing with, with that from Guatemala. Just like I said last week about, about you know, your payments and that kind of stuff. Same deal. Here's, a, here's something on the list that my wife suggested, and that is books. Books in English are a little bit difficult to find here. There are bookstores that have English books. A lot of times they're used, and it could just be that I haven't found a bookstore with a lot of English books uh, in it yet. But we have been around quite a bit and looked around quite a bit. And we, we have found the stores that have ma- uh, mostly used English books. Books in English, that is. I'm not talking about books like learning English. Uh, those are out there too. But, but uh, if you're into reading at all, buy yourself some books while you're still in the States. Bring them with you. And if you're going to do a visa trip every three or six months, bring some more with you every time you come back. And and uh, that'll help you out on that front. By uh, You won't have to read on a Kindle or something like that if you're not into it. But if you do like to read a lot and the Kindle thing doesn't bother you, go ahead and pick up one of those. Those work here. They work just fine. You just connect them to your Wi-Fi or whatever. And bada bing, bada boom, you can read. My wife kind of does both in that front. And the second suggestion from the wife is hygiene products. Now, as you will find once you get here, you can find pretty much anything in Guatemala. Anything you can find in the States, you can pretty much find here with some exceptions. And this is something that uh, hearing from friends has changed quite a bit over the last few years because a lot of things used to be very difficult to find. But you can find just about anything you want. But the thing that uh, she has recommended is like the feminine products. You're going to want to bring enough to be comfortable for a month or two. Shampoo, conditioner, maybe even toothpaste, that kind of stuff. Just to have stuff that feels comfortable to you and that you're not, you know, wondering, oh, man, am I going to be able to find this? You'll be able to find just about everything. But you don't want to get yourself in a situation where maybe if you don't know where a grocery store is or something like that. Uh, or whatever, just to make yourself comfortable so that you're not getting here and then thinking, oh no, like what am I going to do about this kind of stuff? And that's what my wife's had to say about snacks too. For your first couple days, if you don't have somebody, a contact in Guatemala who's going to be taking you to the store or something like that, get yourself some snacks before you get on the plane. And we're talking like go to Costco or something and, and buy some granola bars or something like that that's going to make life just a little bit more comfortable for you. We already talked a little bit about the animals. Don't need to talk about that one on my list. The thing is clothing. Now, Guatemala has climates of every variety except for really like snow. It actually snowed here last year, but that is a rarity. It does get cold and there are places where it gets really hot. So you need to look at the weather of the place where you're going to go. But at the very least, I suggest that you bring a rain jacket because it going to rain. Just about everywhere you go in Guatemala, it going to rain, and it's going to rain a lot. And so you need to have yourself a rain jacket, bring shorts, bring pants, and a rain jacket. Some days it may be hot enough to wear shorts, but then it's going to downpour in the afternoon. It'll rain for a few hours, and then it'll go away. So just make sure you're prepared for that. Also, rain boots. And the other thing is shoes. For many Americans, especially men, shoes are... Kind of difficult to find in Guatemala because our feet uh, are bigger. It depends most of the time. So, like for example, I wear a size 12. Sometimes it's hard for me to find a size 12 in Guatemala. It's not impossible, but it is. It is something that every time you go back to the states, you may want to get yourself a new pair of shoes just. Just uh, just to be safe, and unless you find somewhere that that is, you know, a place you like to go to find the shoes in Guatemala, by all means, go for it. Um, it does exist; it's not hard. And then now, two more items on the list, and that is, before you get here, set yourself up with an Airbnb or a hotel or something. There there are some places that are close to the airport. If you're going to be going somewhere in Guatemala, that's not too far. Uh, that is too far from the airport to travel out at night because sometimes the flights arrive at strange hours of the day. And then there's, there's the whole thing with, you know, you don't want to get here and then figure out where you're going. Book an Airbnb. Airbnbs work just fine here. We've done it two or three times. Works just fine. People do it all over the country. There's Airbnbs and there's, there's, there's things that are 
uh, right next to the airport as far as hotels. And the other thing is make sure you've downloaded and have a credit card uh, put in on your Uber app. Download the Uber app because you can use Uber here too. And if you need to get somewhere from, from the airport to a hotel or whatever, there are taxis, there are shuttles, and you can look those up as well. And you can also uh, get them from right in the airport too if, if you've somehow gotten here and don't have any other option. But Uber also works. I've heard horror stories about Uber as well. Hey, that can happen in any country. Uh, but we've used Uber just fine. And you can get from the airport in Uber almost anywhere within, I don't know, I would almost say any distance, but somewhere that's anywhere between an hour to two hours, you could probably take Uber to it. And when I'm saying an hour to two hours, that's a lot less distance than it is in the States. And the last thing on my list for today is I want to talk about your actual tickets. Okay. We're going to talk about your airplane tickets. Now, depending on where you are in the States, it's going to depend or is going to determine, or it would for me at least, which airline that you are going to take to get to Guatemala. If you're on the West Coast, anywhere on the West Coast or like near Chicago, you're going to want to take United because on the West Coast, you're going from wherever you started to either LA or Houston, but most of the times LA, and then to Guatemala. If you're in the middle of the country or in Florida, you're probably going to be better off on American, even though I don't, just to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of American. It will be quicker connections and stuff if you're in the middle of the country or in Florida or maybe even in the DC area, because you'll be going to either Atlanta or Miami and then to Guatemala. And if you're, sorry, not Atlanta for American, just just uh, Miami with American or Dallas. And then if you are in, in the Georgia area, one of those, somewhere that is just a, a hop to Atlanta or you're in the, the DC area, you're going to be on Delta. That's going to be your best option because you will go from wherever you are to Atlanta and then the hop to Guatemala. It's a lot easier to get here if you're if you're like closer to a hub, especially if you're closer to Houston, Dallas, Miami, LA, Chicago, DC or New York because that's a straight shot to Guatemala. But options are out there. Look it up. I always what I always do is use flights.google.com because that'll show you the prices and the connection times and everything like that for uh for flights and the one thing that i would recommend if you haven't bought your tickets already is don't do a flight that is going to have you arrive in guatemala at midnight or something like that unless you have a contact who a known friend or family member who is going to pick you up not that guatemala is any more dangerous than any other country at night but it is anywhere Anything that happens, you know, the things that happen in the dark are usually worse than what happened in the daytime. And so if I didn't have a friend who was picking me up, I wouldn't be on one of those flights that has you getting here at 11 or 12 at night. I would try to get here in the morning if you can, uh, which is usually possible from the West Coast or um, sometime during the day just to, to be a little more safe and give you, if anything, just a little bit more peace of mind. Well, that music signifies that it's the part of the program where I get to tell you about how you can be a part of the show, or one of the ways, and that is by being one of our patrons at patreon.com slash guateguide. You can support us at any amount, but at just $5 a month, you'll get a shout out on every episode and exclusive access to restaurant reviews done in a video format that you won't get on the podcast, you won't get on YouTube, you won't get anywhere else. That is at patreon.com slash guateguide. No new patrons this week to, to speak of, but when we get that first patron, 
we're gonna we're gonna throw a party. I'm telling you that much. It's gonna be crazy. So remember, all you gotta do, patreon.com slash guate guide, or you can click the link down below on YouTube in the description on your podcast catcher. Let's partner together. Let's do this together. Patreon.com slash guate guide. It's that time of the show where we get to your listener feedback. And I'm actually very excited that we have feedback to talk about on the show today. And all the feedback today comes from YouTube where, excitingly enough, we got quite a bit of views. I was surprised about the amount of views that we got from YouTube, but but we did. And so thank you guys if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, if you are just listening or whatever, whoever you are in whatever form you're listening, the, uh, the premiere of the episode is going to be Mondays, Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern for the U.S. times. Everywhere else, I'm so sorry. I don't know what time it is. But that's when the premiere of the episode is. You can always catch it uh, on Monday mornings via via the audio format. But uh, yeah, got some comments on YouTube. Uh, Revealing His Majesty says, I'd like to know what the story is with the painting behind you. Well, the audio people can't see the painting, but on YouTube you can see it. And it's, uh, it's a painting about, uh, it's like a top view of some ladies, maybe some gentlemen too, in a, in a field picking some vegetables and fruits and whatnot. And the story between the, behind the painting is we went and we're looking to decorate our house, went to try to find this painting. And we met these really two nice uh, old women in the market. And they, uh, look, they tried to give us the gringo price for sure. And uh, we actually got to talk them. We talked them down to like half of what they were asking us. And, you know, we wanted to buy it. We wanted the painting and we wanted to help them out, especially because we're coming out of the pandemic and I know that they needed sales, but they ended up being so funny. We ended up joking with them to the point where we've gone back a couple of times. They've remembered us and even, um, you know, helped us on prices and given us some, you know, bracelets and that kind of stuff for free, which I know that we're still paying the gringo price, but the fact that they were able to, that they were willing to bring it down for us uh, to, for just on the, the like friendship kind of level thing, business friendship, uh, you know, sort of a thing. So that was nice. That's, that's the story behind the painting. We've also have bought a smaller version of this painting for our friends back in California. And uh, I hope they enjoyed it too. Sam Bruner on YouTube says, can we get some type of rating system for the tidbits and reviews? Also, uh, maybe some on the beat reports with some local guates. That would be good. Thank you, Sam, for the comment. Yeah, I we really I, I actually love the suggestion of having a rating system. We really do need to have a rating system. Maybe we'll have a one through five, or we'll have like picante, hasta like muy picante, something like that. We'll have to talk about that. Get a good rating system going on. No review this week, but uh, maybe next week we'll have a have another restaurant review. There's also the exclusive restaurant review as we do on Patreon. And he says also maybe some beat reports and little guates, guatemaltecos or chapines uh, is the the term there. And I would like to do that. But the thing is, I have to find ones that speak English or I have to translate, which I can translate no problem. But do I want to do that extra work? I don't know. I haven't seen yet. So we'll still think about that one. Thank you. Uh, Revealing his majesty once more. Great, great information. Did not know your passport needs to be good for uh, another six months before your trip. Or else you need to renew it. Good to know. Yeah, that is something that you need to know before you before you leave the United States. Or else it's just so much more of a headache to renew your passport in a foreign country. It really is. Not impossible. But uh, save yourself the headache. If your passport is going to expire. Uh, even if your passport is going to expire in seven months when you're coming down. Just renew it in the States before you leave. 
And our last listener feedback of the day from Flavio Zona 5, which I know is actually Flavio Zona 5, says, I would say you can get used to Guate very easily when it comes to technology comforts. Before it used to suck. Now they've improved a lot. Thank you so much for that feedback, Flavio. That's so funny. I mean, I understand that. The the thing is, it's is suck is is a harsh word, you know. Uh, but it's honestly one of the things that I wish would catch on in the states is using WhatsApp. It makes things so much easier. Just think if you could like text Walmart or something, or if you could you know text your your local mechanic on. I mean, it's it's just the the culture on cell phones is so much different in Guatemala than it is in the States. I mean, we have all the, both countries have all the technology. Uh, just the way that we use it is so much different. So thank you so much for that feedback. Remember you can send your feedback into the show by commenting on YouTube or on Twitter and Instagram at Guate underscore guide or at Guate guide, no underscore there at protonmail.com. That's the email address. Like I said, links in the show notes uh, for whatever we've talked about that deserves a link are always on YouTube and on the show notes on your favorite podcast listening place. Man, this episode flew by and you guys didn't even really notice probably. But I had my camera cut out and the battery died in the middle of recording it. And I'm on the end of the battery right now. So I just want to say thank you for being here. Please subscribe on Apple, on Spotify, wherever you're listening. And subscribe on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Guatemala Guide. All right.